that is where I will send you if you don't do your perspective exercises. So as you can see, I'm still in Romania, communism for the whim, uh, which means I don't have good equipment with me. Uh, so watch out for that audio. I recorded with my uh, headphones mic. So ugh. anyways, this video is all about rendering the vampire killing grenade that we uh, designed in the last uh, live stream. Uh, I wanted to use some photo bashing rendering techniques just to see how relatively quickly you can give some life uh, to your designs. So let's get started. So let's continue where we left off in last week's live stream where we drew this uh, vampire killing sort of thing. If you remember, we were ideating a little bit of how to make a holy water sort of grenade. We came up with this uh, sort of throwable thingy and that ended up in this sketch, which we turned into this uh, more well detailed and nice line work. So what we're gonna do next is use a lot of photo bashing and give it some texture, make it look realistic. So this here interior part is going to be wood. Then we're gonna have some leather straps around it and a metallic frame that holds everything in place in the interior. Uh, I think I drew some of that here. Let me show it to you. So here you can see sort of a little bit taken away. Very sketchy, it was very clear in my head, but I didn't wanna spend too much time around it. So this is also sort of a view of it. So if we come back here, uh, I'm, I'm sort of okay with the, the thing. I can, I, we can do two things, apply the textures now and then shading later, or apply shading first and then textures later. Uh, let's see what will work better for us. Okay, so I have a selection going on here. I'm just going to switch to my uh, gradient tool and just take a black one for now. We can always adjust it later. Uh, and this would be something, I think this works for now. Doesn't need to be that dark. I think I liked it when it was coming from this side a bit more. Something like this for now. And then, we, well, actually what we could do is first just fill it with black just to have a selection. So my selection is always there and then I can hide it. Uh, just duplicate it. Actually then I have to select everything, erase, and now I can use this as a selection. And now I can do these sort of things. Uh, what I do want to do is take these wood ends, copy image, and then I'm just gonna make myself folder down here. Nice big picture. So we're gonna paste it on top of our with layer, as you can see, I sort of named everything nicely. And I'm gonna <clears throat> control T this baby, make it a little bit smaller. But actually what I could do before I do that, let me bring it out from there and make it a little bit smaller. Oh, I brought out the wrong thing. So bring it out here. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so it's, I can handle it a little bit better. Uh, make a circle selection. Okay. Control Shift I, delete everything around it, and then bring it back here. And now it's a little bit more oh, handleable. There we go. And now I can skew this how I need it. Something like this. There we go. I'm just gonna rotate this a little bit. So I have <clears throat> a different texture. So I'll bring this one down here. Control T. Make it bigger again. And now I'm skewing it into place here as well. And as you can see, I have a different texture appearing. So it, it's, it's not obviously clear that it is the same foundation that before I did. And that is how quickly we can do that part. Now we need the, the core, well, not, not necessarily now, but we would need the cork parts. Uh, if you want to save memory, you can also just merge these together. Uh, I'm going to do that. 
just to save space, I'm going to call this wood texture. Okay, now let's move on to the to these cork things. And we're looking for cork stoppers. This is a perfect image. How big is the resolution? And it's very small. This I don't think this will be usable. Actually, it is because my image is tiny. Okay, so we have this there. Let me duplicate this and erase everything that we don't need. Okay, I nicely isolated my cork. We'll bring it up here if it's the right layer. Yes, it is. And then duplicate and then same as before. I'll just bring it down here on the cork. Look at me how I wrote this cork. There you go. And then just place it, let's say here, duplicate it, rotate it into place, and try to fit it. What we can do if it doesn't fit, no problem. We have this nice tool that allows us to form it into shape, into the shape that we need. There we go. Then you can. I'll keep on duplicating this one and try to fit it for my needs. And then you just keep on repeating this over and over again until we have everything filled. Okay, now everything is in place. Uh, everything is on one layer. What I'm going to do is select the cork layer and just erase, Control shift i erase everything around our corks. And there we have them, nicely fitting corks. So I decided to go for leather belts instead of straps. I have this one, which might work. So we're gonna copy this. Okay, so let's let's try with this one for now. As per usual, I'm just gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna do a select subject. Delete everything else, duplicate again bring it up here and let's see if we bring it above the texture leather there we go that's where we need it before i do that i'm just gonna try and copy this part like it is and paste it in here then we're just gonna make it smaller now I want to see if I can just make the belt, I mean, this, this metal part fit. If that works, then we can move on to the rest. Should be something like this. And now the warping comes in because we want it fitting with our perspective. So I wouldn't worry about making everything perfect because later we're going to paint over it. But for now, it's, it's good to try and fit it as much as we can. And now what we can do is take this bottom part as well. Just copy it, uh, paste it back in here. What you could do is lock this and go with a clone tool and just try to go over this area a bit. I think this one we can use now. Paste it in there. Let's go to leather. And then let's make this a little bit smaller. I feel like I could have made my life easier just by finding something that is already much more round than what I'm, uh, what I found. And then we could do a much easier transition. So what we can do here is we go on this texture, take a soft brush and just erase this hard edge a little bit. So to bring the two together. And that sort of, sort of works. Once again, it does not need to be perfect. Let's try this one, copy image for the big one. Um, before I continue, what we can do here is just pick a color pick sort of a painting brush that you like, uh, select leather, and then we're just gonna paint within leather. 
now I'm just going to roughly take this area and above the ladder. Let's see what we can do with this. Here what I like is also the, the sort of the edge, which is that nice whitey area. So I'm just going to smoosh this into place as much as I can. Um, like that. Take the warp tool. Warp it, warp it. Warp there. And there. Something like this. Now what I would do is take this nice color and just bring it over there. We will use it probably there and nowhere else. Uh, select leather and delete everything around it. And when it comes to painting, even if even if you're not good or familiar with painting, it's, it's relatively easy, so I wouldn't freak out. I just pick the button color, then I pick the pot color for the shadow, the core shadow there, and then you have a nice highlight on top of it. So basically you just copy what you see there and you should get pretty good results. We can also look at these um, holes and copy what they look like on the actual leather uh, reference. That's it. And then where you where you have leather, you just make sure to oh, paint in that color. What's uh, something is there we go. Hey guys, just a quick break here because I want to announce a new challenge, which is based on the video and also the location on it. We are doing a vampire killing prop concept challenge, which means that I want you to design something with garlic or steaks or some sort of mechanisms that kill vampires from the vampire lore and i want you to do a three-quarter view if you are working digitally try and do some photo bashing try and make it as realistic maybe if you never used this before this is a good opportunity to try it and other than that i want at least two to three uh, side views or front views that explain the mechanisms explain the prop a bit more how it works and uh, whatnot uh, deadline will be the 13th of July, which is Wednesday. And then as per usual, we are going to take a look at all the entries on the 14th, which will be Thursday, so next week's live stream. Uh, use the hashtag VampyProp. That's Vampy Prop. You can see it here below. If you are posting only on your social media, which is Instagram, or if you're posting on the Discord, make sure to put your social media there as well. So me and also other people can check your other stuff out there. Uh, have fun. And with that, let's go back to the video. Like think of it right now. I'm very zoomed in. This is not really going to be visible too much if you if you zoom out. So I wouldn't worry about. Uh, too much detail or losing detail because if you zoomed out like this it's gonna look fine in the end and I'm actually gonna take this part here again and just paste it in here again and it's gonna be super stretched once again don't care that much I just want it to sort of fit where I need it to be which is this area I'm gonna try and make it somewhat straight again it's a bit distorted but uh, actually it's pretty good there we go and then just repeat this again okay that is our leather Actually, I can turn this off as well. Looks looks pretty good, pretty leathery from far. So that's why I said, if you don't zoom in, everything is, is quite nice. Next, we are going to look for water and water vials. Let's try this one, copy image. Let's rotate it into place. Works pretty well. Uh, what I'm gonna change is draw in it a little bit. So I'm gonna take bigger brush, actually, fill it like this then i'm gonna take this dark go around here 
and then also take it around there a little bit going into that line there just a little bit of painting this should work pretty well if we start duplicating this paste it in there uh, and as always like these whatever you steal from the internet uh, well you borrow technically you're not gonna make money with these these are just internally to to show your ideas to somebody so the whole point of this is not to put these into an illustration i am not doing an illustration here i am just doing quick idea explanation uh, generation something like that so let's see if this one will work uh, what I'm going to do is adjust the colors, so control U, and just move it to scale until I sort of get to the same blue. There we go. And now all we need to do is try and fit it in there as much as we can. And I'm just going to paint over it here and there, so there it can be darker. Uh, I like some of these darks, so I'm going to bring some of that in there, there as well. And the last thing we need is metal, uh, and I'm going to look for silver metal uh, tools. I think we can go straight with this. Copy image, just paste it in there, move it to the side a bit. Take this bar here and just copy paste it all over. Now where is our metal, 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 metal parts? So what's good to, to notice is that the light is sort of coming from this direction. So I will, in this case, turn this around uh, because my light is coming from the other direction and I want that to be clear. So there's going to be a little bit of a shadow on one side and light on the other. There we go, something like that. Perfect. This looks good, but we would need something like this that is for free. Copy image. And then here, instead of what I pasted in there, I just pasted on top of it. As you can see, this actually is a pretty good fit. I'm going to make it a bit smaller because you don't want the texture of the scratches and everything to be too big because then you're going to immediately lose uh, that feeling of uh, size. And uh, we're almost there. At least the, the texturing part, all that's left, uh, you, we can come back to our lines. We lock our lines. I'm going to take my this painting thingy and we see that these lines are black because we have a, a blue liquid these should be definitely not black like i can even make them a bit brighter i would say something like that and that will push them a little bit into the background this is the painting part that i usually enjoy quite a bit because here you can see okay i want a bit more blue here just go in there, add a bit of blue. With these corks, you always take the brightest area. And then you can also add a bit more brightness to it. And you can say, okay, I want a nice little edge here. You can add, if, if your hands are as wobbly as mine, you can always bring up smoothing. And then you get nicer roundings like that. Same idea here. This is already quite bright, so I'm coming in with an almost white at this point. This is just to make your whole thing pop a little bit more. What I like to do is just take a bright area of this wood and give it a, an edge. So something like this. Here at some point that will turn into a shadow. So we'll take a darker area there and then our edge becomes more dark like this because that is a shadow area 
And this will make everything look a little bit more 3D. So it's always worth putting in that extra little effort towards the end. Also, it's really fun. Okay, so these harsh black lines, we can always play with them and make them disappear a bit more. So I'm going to take some of these brighter edges here and just make the leather a bit more worn out as well. Just add a bit of a worn edge there and we can do the same with the black. Just push it a little bit back. It doesn't need to be that super dark. Same here. You can also take what's here and just take away from what's there. Erase it a little bit here and there and it will look like it's it's just a bit more worn. It's, it's something that I want out of this. Uh, we're going towards the shadow, so I, I make sure to repick my colors. I'm not staying with what I had there. Uh, here again, we can come back to the shadow part. And where is my shadow? And just add a bit of darkness there and here as well. And if you see like a natural thing like this crack here, you can emphasize it. You can take a bright and make sure that the edges will be a bit even more lit. So that's, that should be always cool. Uh, and here you can cut away a little bit from that texture and just add the color or, well, not texture in this case, but at least the color of the, the leather strap. And I know that that should be a bit darker towards the edge there. There might be some shadow there or even darker if you want to go like that. Something like that. And then that, that makes it look much more natural, like a proper piece of wood. And this is the end of this video. I hope you took away something interesting from it. And if you did, feel free to leave your questions or comments in the description down below. Don't forget to hit that like button if you want me to put on my left shoe first from now on. And subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I hope you will join our concept challenge. But either way, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.